my lovely imps, the time has come. It's not often that I have to admit that I was wrong, that I did something that damaged or hurt the world in some way. When you are as powerful and influential a person as myself, sometimes, no matter what path that you choose, you can end up basically hurting people. The way that enormous and powerful, thunderous beings such as myself, which with powerful thoughts, you know, the way that we move in the world, it changes things no matter what you say or do, no matter which direction you decide to go. The world will be irrevocably changed. And to be honest, sometimes that change is not for the better. Sometimes you set the world off on a dark path a dark path that you can never go back for, no matter how hard you try. But such is the life of being a dreadnought, a powerful thing, an overstepping being, a changer, a mover, an innovator, a disruptor, someone such as myself, a demon, you might even argue. And unfortunately, sometimes, all that you can do is look at your mistake and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying things wrong. I'm sorry for doing things wrong. Sometimes you have to just say, I'm sorry that you made me do this. You know, you don't really have any other choice, but you gotta apologize. And today I have to apologize. I have to apologize for being wrong in a horrible way, for being cruel, in fact, for being, for being evil, maybe even. You see, in the ancient times, long before most of you were here, I made a statement, and I don't even remember, I can't even, it, the mistake has embedded itself so deeply into the history of my channel, I can't even find what stream it was in that I said this. And I think that's part of what hurts me the most, you know, is that I can't even remember when I hurt other people. I can't even find it. But the gist of it was that I was mocking people who I felt were incorrect, but in truth it was I who was incorrect. And in my arrogance, my godlike arrogance, I could not see from their perspective. And my hubris is proving to be my downfall. Sometime, maybe a year, a year and a half, maybe two years ago, I committed a sin. A sin that I have to make right now to the best of my ability, but that I will never fully be able to heal the wounds from. There are people in my audience right now who still believed in me, who bear the sign, the mark of what I wrought on them and will wander the world forever, slowly hollowing out because I marked them in my arrogance, unjustly. You see, sometime about two years ago, I was playing Dark Souls 1, and I wasn't even doing my playthrough yet. And somebody told me that Dark Souls 2 was their favorite game. And I paused the game and I put it up on the screen just like I do right now. And I said, let's be real. Okay, this is the quote as best as I can remember. I said, let's be fucking real. Can you guys stop motherfucking lying to me? Can you guys stop with the jokes? 
Because I know that you all like to pretend that Dark Souls 2 is good and you like to act, but let's be real. Can we be honest? Because I feel like you guys are screwing with me. Well, gosh, I, as a joke, kind of wanted to debate you on fucking why Dark Souls 2 is the best Souls game, but I think... Oh, it come would, on. You I can't, think you're not be, serious. Uh, oh, gosh, I had a, I had something I was going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. I... I fucking love how the combat feels in Dark Souls 2 compared to the other Dark Souls games. No. Purely in that... Now, if this was Dark Souls 2, that would have just killed you instantly, unavoidably. But this isn't Dark Souls 2, thankfully. It's a good game. <laughs> but they were right. Dark Souls 2 actually is fucking good. It's not only good, it's actually fucking great. And it took me recognizing how much of a fucking asshole fool I was. That not only had I d deigned it necessary to try and flex on them about a game that I hadn't played in over 10 years. But also that I dared to do it before I embarked on a journey through all of the Dark Souls games. Which you guys can enjoy all across my channel. I have VODs of all of my playthroughs. You can just search Dark Souls. Dark Souls 1, we're about, I don't know, somewhere in the like one third mark of Dark Souls 2 now. But I had to admit this this last week because I started playing Dark Souls 2 on stream. And then I also started playing Dark Souls 2 off stream. And I've ended up playing so much Dark Souls 2 that I had to stop myself so that I don't ruin the on-stream experience. I completely and utterly would, am defeated on this. And I owe it to those out there. And I can name a few of them, okay? Baphomet, you are one of them. I remember, I made fun of you. And I'm so sorry. If I could heal the dark sign that I branded you with, I would. But I can't. The fact remains that somewhere out there is a record of my misdeed. Some scholar, perhaps you could even call them a scholar of the first sin, knows where that timestamp is and will someday travel across it, perhaps by accident. They might not even recognize the magnitude of what it was at the time. Such will it be trammeled through the ages and eons of history. But it will exist nonetheless. And a lie remains a lie. The truth is, another apology that I owe is to Chariot. Chariot, who not only corrected me, but also, um, but also, uh, took the time to teach me what I was missing about Dark Souls 2 and helped me actually enjoy this game. Now, that doesn't mean that Dark Souls 2 is without flaws. But, there is some serious coping going on of which I was guilty too. Because Dark Souls 1 has a lot of flaws as well. And we look the other way as Dark Souls fans. Dark Souls 2 has a bunch of flaws. And for some reason, we treat it like shit. Despite the fact that this game is loaded to the teeth with everything that you love about Dark Souls 1 and more. Dark Souls 2 is actually fucking awesome. And there is so much that I like about it in replaying it. Now, a lot of you are getting mad. I can see it's funny because some of you are going to get mad because I titled a stream that I need to apologize for something and are like, God damn it, I thought she was going to do something else. Well, I actually have three more things or sorry, two more things to apologize for. One of which is significantly more substantial and one of, the, one of which is not that substantial, but nonetheless interesting. So you should stick around for that because I do actually have another one. I, I just wanted to make this one the central one because I had been thinking about it and I actually do feel a little bad. Um, this might sound a little goofy, but it's actually true that I've been thinking about how 
much of a dumb dickbag I was about Dark Souls 2 a lot recently as I willingly play more and more Dark Souls 2 and actually enjoy my time with it. There's a lot to enjoy in Dark Souls 2, and I found myself excited to play more because I don't remember all of it, and I never played all the DLCs. So there's content that I've never even seen at all that I'm excited to get to, and it feels fun to play. I just didn't get what I was doing. And looking back now at the way that I was before, I realized the reasons why I didn't like Dark Souls 2 the first time through. And a lot of it was just because I needed, excuse me, just because I needed to get good. I literally did, but I didn't, but the differences in Dark Souls 2 to Dark Souls 1, I couldn't even tell what they were because I wasn't good at either of them. And once I got good at Dark Souls as a whole, I'm now able to go back and go, I don't know what I was so mad about in Dark Souls 2. I know everybody's going to joke about the, oh, get, get good or whatever. But the truth is, like, I did need to actually get good. The, the, perhaps that's one of the things that I will say is a small flaw of Dark Souls 2, which is that um, Dark Souls 1, it's a little bit easier to understand overall what you need to do to get better at the game. Whereas in Dark Souls 2, some things can be a little confusing. But also, Dark Souls 2 is just a harder game, generally. Um, Dark Souls 2 is more challenging than Dark Souls 1 in a lot of ways. The traps are more devious. They're not even less fair. There are lots of unfair traps in Dark Souls 1. They're just a little more devious and require you to think a little harder when you engage in them. The enemies have larger movesets and have more creative uh, defenses and attacks. Um, the game is just harder than Dark Souls 1. And I remember going from Dark Souls 1 to Dark Souls 2 and feeling frustrated about it. And I realized that my frustration I allowed to overtake me like a dark curse to shade my eyes from the truth. And there are, of course, there are flaws with Dark Souls 2. Um, the textures in Dark Souls 2, um, because the world is so much bigger than Dark Souls 1's world, there are more areas where you look at the graphical textures and you go, ooh, that looks off-putting. But then I remember that, like, Dark Souls 1 had that exact problem, and basically everybody writes it off for free. They do a gimme. When you get to the, like, there's a chunk of Dark Souls 1 that just looks like hell, and there's a zone in Dark Souls 1 where you can't see anything anyway. So there are two late-game zones in Dark Souls 1 one where they hide their mistakes and the other one where their mistakes are obvious for all to see. And people just write off the, the one that's obvious for all to see and the one where they hid their mistakes. I'm talking, of course, about Tomb of the Giants, where God knows if you could see the textures there, they would be repeating. You can actually tell if you pay close attention um, as when, you, when you're going back there the second time. There are zones in Dark Souls 2 where you're like, wow, these repeating textures are getting a little much. However, there is the game is also enormous and the zones are still really well designed. And also, Dark Souls 2 is way less linear than any of the other Dark Souls games. And it's really good for that reason. There's been so many points in my playthroughs, both of my playthroughs of Dark Souls 2, where I've had to sit and go, well, which zone do I want to do next? And you can choose multiple zones, and they're all valid options. People remember Dark Souls 1 for being fairly non-linear, that there's lots of weird ways that you can take around the world and shortcuts you can open. But Dark Souls 2 flexes on Dark Souls 1 in that regard. Dark Souls 2 has so much zone interconnectivity. All of the zones, like so many of the zones plug into each other, and you can move around in so many different ways. There are so many different paths that you can take to different checkpoints in the game, and it's impressive. I like it. It's good. It's actually really, really good. And also, there's a lot of really creative stuff going on in the game. They have a ton of weapons. The armor sets are amazing. In fact, I can't believe I'm going to say this, and people are going to get mad at me for this, but I just played Dark Souls 1, and now I'm playing Dark Souls 2. I did these back-to-back, -back, okay? Dark Souls 2 has way better armor sets than Dark Souls 1 by, like, a long shot. And 
because of the way the game is designed, you can actually fashion souls, while fashion souls is pretty heavily discouraged and punished in Dark Souls 1. In Dark Souls 2, you can dress up a hundred different ways and have it be still viable. You can have a character that is uniquely yours. Whereas in Dark Souls 1, people tend to stick to a handful of popular armor sets because you ha because it's so stringent with the weight limitations and the need to have a light roll. Dark Souls 2 actually does do better on that front. Which is, which is you know, I gotta give it to them. It's impressive, okay? Dark Souls 2 has amazing outfits. And another thing, Dark Souls 2 character creator is amazing. The characters that you can make in Dark Souls 2 are beautiful. They're awesome. It's a huge step up from Dark Souls 1. In Dark Souls 1, the character creator makes basically every character look really, really goofy. And in Dark Souls 2, that's just not a problem. There's a ton of options, and it's very easy to get a character that looks good and cool or scary or whatever. You can make your character look however you want. You don't have the weird, like, Morrowind character creator problem of Dark Souls 1. And now, obviously, there's some technical things there, but also Dark Souls 2 is not, like, it's not going that much further on a pure technical level than Dark Souls 1 was, a little bit, but it's still on the same console generation. So, yeah. Anyway, basically, this little section I wanted to devote to the Dark Souls 2 people who I insulted, and, uh, and I wanted to atone for my sins. I wanted to pray at the statue of Velka and have my sins purified so that I might go on with a clear conscience or as clear of a conscience as I can. I like Dark Souls 2. I like it a lot. And if, if you like what I had to say here and thought it was funny or interesting, I'm going to be t doing a full conversation on Dark Souls 2 in the future. Um, I don't want to go into everything here, but there's a lot that I've been enjoying. The outfits, the magic system, the weapon options, the interconnectivity of zones. These are all things that I've found really compelling about Dark Souls 2. And I have to admit that I was wrong about my previous attitude. I'm actually really enjoying my return to it. And I feel like I was uh, missing out on something in the past. But perhaps I just needed to get to a higher level of wisdom. I had not gathered the souls necessary to understand what I was missing about this game. And I want to put out a special thank you to Baphomet and to Chariot. Baphomet, who has uh, regularly put down their summon sign for me to summon, um, and Chariot, who took time out of her day to guide me through decisions, mo lots of time out of her day to guide me through decisions that helped me understand this game's unique mechanics better. Stuff like understanding the adaptability system, stuff like understanding the weight system, stuff like understanding the bonfire aesthetic system, stuff like understanding the differences in the upgrade system. Dark Souls 2 has a very different upgrade system than Dark Souls 1, and I didn't get it. Now I do. Anyway, shout out to both of you uh, who I did wrong by. And Baphomet says the DS2 apologist community has forgiven Demon Mama. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyway, I'll be continuing my Dark Souls 2 playthrough later, but I have other apologies to get to that I'm sure people are more excited about. Um, but, of course, those who got to hear this one are and stuck through are the true fans. And everybody else who flailed out and ran away, well, we know where your true colors lie. Wait a minute, that's not the right, that's not the phrase. Whatever, you get it. Shut up, fuck you. I'm thinking about Dark Souls 2 right now. Press subscribe, press like, and keep hearing the signal. Anyway.